Hi everyone, I'm Avinash Pathak, expert data scientist at TomTom. I'll be talking about entity matching in NLP. Uh, so this is the agenda. We'll cover what is entity matching, why entity matching is important, history of entity matching, entity matching and different models, how to measure success of entity matching and one tool entity embed. So what is entity matching? Uh, you can look at the table below. You see two rows. Those are nothing but two songs. Uh, the title of first song is Me and Mrs. Jones. Second one also has the same title with another word added called Remix. So you see different attributes are added. So two songs are basically um, basically presented with different attributes. So anything in the real world which you can represent with different attributes is nothing but an entity. What are the different use cases? So suppose you can represent a song with different attributes, then you can use it for song matching. If you're able to represent an address with different attributes, you can definitely use it for address matching. You can also use it for social profile matching, like on Facebook or Twitter, you can fetch profiles from it, represent it with different attributes, and you can use it to identify whether two users are same or not. You can also use it for clothes matching or for that matter, any item in retail. You can use it on matrimony sites or dating sites to identify whether two uh, users are same or not. So in previous examples, we saw the song represented with two rows, which were like uh, com quite complete and the data was filled in. But in reality, things get little complicated. So many a times uh, there is use of words in colloquial fashion and which is also presented in text the similar way. So if you look at row two, you will see the word added remix. Um, and in row three, the word blow in, which we use in colloquial fashion, instead of blowing is used. We also have additional information, the example of remix. There is unnormalization of data. There is unstructured data. Sometimes the data is missing. Sometimes the data is dirty, which is not clean. Sometimes there is unavailability of supervised data. So if you look at row one and two, you will see the album Call Me Responsible is present in row one, but it's not present in row two. Similarly, composer is present in row one, but not in row two. While songwriter is present in row two, but it is not present in row one. So you will see when you go for entity matching and try to match the different attributes, you will see that you can't compare it with none or the empty cell, right? Similarly, in row three and four, the album is present in row three, but not in row four. But in practice, row one and two are basically same songs and row three and four are basically same songs. And one more thing that we want to look into is scale. So imagine this things like row one and two, these are in millions. Now the processing would take a lot of time, right? So imagine you have 1 million entities and uh, you want to perform entity matching. So the naive way to do that is you compare every entity with every other entity. So that combination becomes NC2 for an entities and for 1 million, it is quite really high. Instead of that, what you can do is you do minimal comparison in the beginning between entities instead of doing computationally expensive operations. And you create small blocks such that these blocks have all the duplicates of any entity present in that block within itself. Now this step is called as blocking. So in blocking, you create essentially small number of blocks out of the initial entities and the block should have certain properties. So basically the block, any block should have all the entities which are duplicates of which are present in that. We make sure by focusing on high recall. So let's just say there is entity X and all its duplicates are within that entity, that block of entities. Then you will say you have achieved high recall or 100% recall. But if half of the in, half of the duplicates of that entity X are present in some other blocks, then you will say, okay, my recall is only 50%. So in that way, you are trying to focus on high recall. That is 100% recall. Now, while focusing on recall, you may just want or you may just get tempted to increase the size of a block. 
basically that would make sure all your duplicates are within the same block but there is a catch if you increase the size of the block the number of computationally expensive uh, comparisons or operations that you do will increase very high so this is called as pair entity ratio it should also be small meaning the size of the block should also be small third the human effort in creating the blocking should be as minimal as possible or there should be none and finally the blocking algorithm should be scalable enough to handle millions of records meaning the blocking algorithm that you are using should not have highly com highly expensive computational operations it should be as light as possible so we can see a two examples first one is without blocking and second one is with blocking in without blocking let's just say we have n entities initially now to compare every entity with every other entity you will have to do nc2 rigorous computationally expensive comparisons and then you will get the deduplicated entities basically with blocking though you have n entities initially you create small blocks out of it with very minimal or non expensive comparisons and then these blocks are of size k so you have to perform kc2 into m m being the number of blocks created computationally expensive comparisons so let's get that into perspective so let's just say the n is basically 10 so you have 10 entities without blocking if you do nc2 which becomes 10 into 9 by 2 is equal to 45 so you have to perform 45 computationally expensive operations but without blocking let's just again say n is equal to 10 you create small blocks of size to each so you have basically uh, five blocks and if five blocks have two entities each meaning you have to do one comparison in each block so it becomes one into five five operations so 45 operations versus five now let's just increase the size of k basically you uh, you were doing k is equal to five five clusters you can or the number of entities within the clusters were uh, or the blocks was 2 now let's just make it 3 see what happens on the number of um, like computational expensive operations so when k becomes 3 the number of operations within that block you'll have to perform becomes uh, 3c2 so basically 3 into 2 divided by 2 again 2 so you will for n is equal to 10 you will have uh, 2 plus 2 plus 2 six such operations and then there will be another block with only single entity so only six comparisons even with the size of k increases a bit now for 10 it was 45 operations if you make it 12 it becomes 66 if you make it 14 it becomes even more so as the size of n increases the number of computationally expensive operations increase in a very high rate and that is not desirable that's why the blocking is must so let's look at history of entity matching so first one is pattern matching so basically how you would match the uh, initial uh, initially how would you match the different entities second one is deep learning based blocking and third one is self supervised blocking which is quite latest so let's look at example of the song again you have two songs uh, me and mrs jones and they are represented very well enough with different attributes so with pattern matching what you would do is you will write some pattern and you will say okay if these things are present then my pattern is successful or the other way to say it that is if some things are absent then my pattern is successful that's the two ways you go when you do pattern matching now let's just say your al album also has numbers so you will have to adjust your pattern matching now let's just say two more attributes are added then again you will have to adjust your pattern matching now let's just say the song comes in spanish and you will have to write the title in spanish so you might not be supporting spanish so you will have to also adjust the pattern so do you see what i'm getting into it's an incremental approach and you will have to continuously do the work again and again and again so and it will always be in maintenance phase and that's that is the main disadvantage of pattern matching which is covered into basically the deep learning based blocking so what deep learning based blocking says is you don't have to worry about the typos you don't have to worry about the language and you don't even have to worry about the attributes so it performs blocking in basically five steps 
so you do first token embedding so in each attribute let's just say song title is there uh, me and mrs jones right so me and mrs jones these are five four tokens so you want to embed them differently so the paper auto blocks is that you can use fast text for it so fast text would take care uses ngram for embeddings so it would take care of incomplete tokens or even if some tokens are misspelled then you do attribute embedding so you have five or six attributes for song so with for each attribute you have a bunch of tokens now every token has is embedded differently but you also have to combine them and that is where the attribute embedding is done so you can either perform attribute embedding uh, just by like i think concatenating the tokens or there is a better way you can use attention based neural network encoder to convert this combined tokens into basically a sequence of embeddings and that becomes your attribute embedding now next step is tuple signature so you have now the different embedding for different attributes so what is a tuple signature tuple signature means whether you want to combine two or more attributes together to form a tuple so the naive approach would be you just feed in all the embeddings of the attribute separately but you can combine them create a signature signature meaning you just want to com combine these two uh, attributes together always and that becomes your one of the signature of the embedding so why it is important uh, let's just say you again have songs so songs has lyricist song has writer basically the same thing composer singer now this different artist could be same or you might find in reality that the artist which is singer his name is written in just artist field so there could be mis a mixture of names there could be missing data in one song uh, entity compared to other now if you compare them all com uh, sorry combine them all and create an embedding and then compare such embeddings so even if you have few attributes missing you will still get this matching here so in case of pattern matching you might want to do like cross attribute matching or you might want to do attribute to attribute comparison but when there is attribute which is empty you will say there is no match so that would carry a lot of weight in case of pattern matching but when you combine such attributes you will simply say okay at least it is matching 50% or 60% or 70% so meaning you are not adding negative weight to it and you are still saying okay there is a match so it's a better comparison approach so that's why you should always go for tuple signature and next step is model training so model training basically looks for positive label set and what it does is it trains with an objective that maximizes the differences of the cosine similarities between the tuple signature of match pairs and between unmatched pairs what it means is if you have two pairs which are basically labeled as similar so in hyperspace of embedding they will they will be close to each other but if you have two um, uh, two entities which are basically not matching they should be far apart so that's why the model training basically takes care of and the last part is fast enhancers so now your embeddings are ready uh, in multi dimensional vector what you want to do is find out the duplicate or the nearest neighbors of the current entity so the learn model is applied to compute the signature for all tuples and an lsh family of cosine similarity is used to retrieve the nearest neighbor for each tuple to generate candidate pairs for blocking so let's just say you want to find out uh, k is equal to 30 neighbors for blocking which were like potential duplicates of it so you will say k is equal to 30 input an entity and it will find out the nearest neighbors of it which would be potential match for you uh next is self supervised blocking for entity matching so this was proposed in paper called as deep block so let's just say you have an entity and you pass it through a neural network and you get ut which is basically a compact representation of that entity now again you fit this compact representation to another neural network to retrieve the original entity so what it means is this compact representation of this entity would approximate this entity in a very good way now let's just say you do it for all the entities and then you can perform neural 
or nearest neighbor search on these kind of entities which would be smaller in size so the operation would become very computationally less um, i would say computationally uh, less costly now next step to this would be let's just say you have original entity you can drop some of the fields or some of the attributes of it feed it to neural network create this compact version then you feed this compact version to another neural network and retrieve the original entity with all the attributes what it means means is you are trying to approximate even the missing attribute based on the neighboring attributes also this will be useful when you have to do the matching where two entities have some data missing so this becomes really powerful so you have trained your model you have done some kind of blocking what happens after blocking so after blocking you do computationally expensive comparisons because you have small blocks of um, entities let's just say 10 then you want to do the comparisons among themselves instead of doing comparisons into like 1 million uh, entities with each other so what are the different options so you can calculate basically edit distance between two like all the attributes of embeddings or all the attributes of the entity or basically few attributes of the entity you want to calculate embedding distance between entities so you can use basically sentence transformers to calculate embedding distance you can calculate phonetic similarity you can calculate length of an attribute use it as a feature or you can calculate the length of all the strings in the in that entity combined you can calculate jaro winkler similarity between few attributes you can use sequence matcher you can carry jacquard similarity which is basically intersection upon union so it will give you basically how many characters are common if you want to do it on string and you can also have entity specific features for example uh, for songs you can add country of origin you can add uh, the date of release you can add number of artist or so many things similarly you want to add many product based features so the idea of doing this computationally expensive operations on very small block is that it gives you liberty to do as many operations as possible and uh, it is also like good idea to do some uh, entity specific operations on it i have added a link of kaggle competition basically which was organized by four square uh, it and i have fetched this uh, basically features from that now you have done your entity matching now how do you measure the success of entity matching uh, if you want to compare your model with it, like previous versions of it or maybe you have created different flavors of model then you can go for the traditional like model matrix like precision recall or r1 score so that is fine when you want to compare a computer model with other models but you should also consider business metric i'll tell you why so let's just see if you have 1 million entities you ran your entity matching algorithm you found out there are 1000 duplicates but for sure can you say there are no duplicates existing no there could be 50000 more you are not sure about it that's why you have to consider some business metric so let's just say your entities are products which are represented with different attributes which describe the products themselves and your business is logistic business so based on the products you pre order those products so if you have duplicate products present in your database then you will end up putting redundant orders now if you have someone or some mechanism to find out how many redundant orders are there so if that metric or that value goes down after your entity matching algorithm is up you can say okay your entity matching algorithm is working a bit and benefiting my business as well so that way business having a business metric is very important also it is not directly possible to know all the duplicates in the entity matching so you can also sometimes involve human in the loop so how can you do that you just fetch a sample of random pairs from the entity matching and uh, then have a human look at it basically and then it will be a sample from the population so you can say okay um, this percent of predictions are correct so whether i want to go with that confidence or not
Next is applications of entity matching. So we looked into the song example thoroughly. You can also represent an address with a bunch of attributes. So you can use it for address matching. You can represent people with different attributes on social media from like Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And you can verify whether they are the same people or not. You can also do clothes matching or for that matter, any item in retail, like take any example from any uh, product from Amazon and it is still good to go for an entity matching, I would say. You can also use it for matrimony or dating sites profile matching. So let's just say you have two individuals from the dating site and you have a bunch of attributes. There you go. You can find the matches, potential matches or potential partner for someone. But in this world, if you are able to represent anything with attributes, then I would say entity matching can be applied to it. So the applications of entity matching are limited to your uh, imagination, I would say. So next, I will look into a tool which is entity embed. So how do you install it? It's just simple. Uh, you do pip install entity embed. So entity embed expects data in certain format. So it basically expects a list of dictionary objects which must contain ID and cluster. So you can see three examples of the dictionary here. First, second, and third with ID 0, 1, and 2. It has ID which uniquely identifies a particular entity and cluster which indicates what are the duplicates of this entity. So here cluster, like first two entities are cluster 0, both have the value cluster zero means they're duplicate of each other while the third entity has cluster value as one meaning it is not duplicate of the first one now defining the fields so once you have created your um, basically list of dictionaries you want to define how record fields will be numericalized and encoded by entity embeds deep neural network so there are multiple options provided by entity embed as to how you want to encode the particular attribute so multi token mean you want to perform certain kind of embedding on it semantic multi token meaning you want to perform the embedding on it but having the emphasis on semantic also sometimes you just want to hot encode it use you can also mention it it gives you the flexibility of using the kind of embedding you want to do so for example the uh, title semantic shows here the fast text is used also you can specify max max string length you can specify the tokenizer so it, this one this example uses entity embeds default tokenizer but you can use the bunch of other tokenizers also now actually building the model. So under the hood entity embed uses PyTorch Lightning and you have to create a data model object for it. So when you create a data model object, uh, you have to divide your record dictionary or the list of dictionaries that you created initially into three things. You want to keep a separate set for train. Then there is for validation and for test. And you have to also mention what is the field in the dictionary which identifies or which helps in identifying whether two entities are duplicate or not. And here it is cluster. So we have mentioned cluster field is cluster. You also have to mention what kind of numericalizer you are using. So I have added record numericalizer. And then the rest of the things like batch size, evaluation batch size, and random seed are the hyperparameters that you can play with. Now actually training the model. So when you train the model, you must choose the K of the approximate nearest neighbors. That is the top K neighbor or model will use to find duplicates in the embedding space. So when you say K is equal to 30, it will try to find out the 30 neighbors. And then your training algorithm will use it for actually approximating this model. So cost function will be dependent on this K also. Now, when your model is trained and ready, you would want to use it in production. So there are two ways actually to use it in production. So first one model provides a predict function and second, the model provides you the predict pairs function. So you might want to use a predict function to generate an embedding out of the entity. So let's just say you have trained your algorithm on 1 million entities. Now you come up with a new entity and you want to find out which of the existing uh, entities are the 
potential duplicates of this so what you will do is you will use predict pairs and find out let's just say 100 uh, neighbors or 100 duplicates potential duplicates of it so that is where blocking happened and next you will apply your computationally expensive features that is the second step where you would focus more on precision you would apply that algorithm where you will find the exact matches of it and then you can use your matrix like precision recall you can use your business metric and you can also add human in the loop for uh, verifying the sample of population whether your algorithm is successful or not in production i have added four references here so first one is reference to a paper called as deep block which introduces um deep learning for blocking in entity matching and also self supervised approach second one is auto block on which the entity embed is loosely based on third one is linked to the entity embed tool itself and fourth one is uh, the link to kaggle competition from which i actually got this feature which i mentioned for computationally expensive operations and that's it thank you everyone